सह नवतु सह नौ भुनक्त सह वीर्यंकर वह तेजस्वीनावधीतमस्तु मिदिषा वह शातिशाशाति गुरुर्ब्रह्म गुरुर्विष्णु गुरुर्देव महेश्वर गुरुरेव परम ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम we have seen till the fourth mantra and the fifth mantra fifth mantra ye te shu yas charate bhrajamane shu यथाकालं चाहुत यो ह्यादायन चाहुत यो ह्यादायन तम नयंत्येता सूर्य से रश्मय यत्र देवानाम पतिरेको धिवास ये तेषु यरते भ्राजमानेशु यथा कालम च आहुत हि आददायन यस्टर्डे वी सॉ काली कराली च मनोजवा च सुलोहिता या च धूम्रवर्णा देर आर सेवन काइंड ऑफ फ्लेम्स एंड द पोएटिक वे ऑफ सेंग इट इन द लैंग्वेज ऑफ उपनिषद्स जैसे अग्नि हैज सेवन टंग्स सो इफ यू फाइंड अग्निदेव डोंट इमीडिएटली आस्क हिम ओपन योर माउथ ही विल से हा 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 Do you remember the old rhyme, Johnny Johnny yes Papa? So he will only say ha ha ha. Why? This is a figurative way of speaking that he has seven tongues. Meaning there are seven different kinds of flames. In some you offer the oblations, in some you don't offer the oblations. And while the yagna is happening, the we'll come to the number of counts. there are always uh, one main priest who knows the entire details of all four vedas he is not just by a title called chaturvedi but he by knowledge is a chaturvedi he knows all the four vedas he knows the entire rituals he knows which part which mantra to use and added with that he also should know what mantra to be offered what sequence to be offered and what kind of oblations to be offered in what kind of flames that have to be invoked and offered and he has assistants so there are the assistants who are experts in each veda rigveda yajurveda samaveda and atharva veda and he look he look at the people and say om samaveda so when he says om samaveda they cannot chant any samaveda mantra that they know it has to be in accordance with that which is being done that particular mantra alone has to be chanted and supposing they pick a wrong mantra so what does he say om meaning you know be alert that is not the mantra to be chanted in here it's a different mantra so what has to know the entire specific details to make sure that this i mean this kind of karma kanda 
is successful and fruitful. So, here they say once such kind of offerings are done, yeteshu yas charate bhrajamaneshu yatha kalam cha ahutayaha adadayan tam nayanti etaha surya rashmayaha yatra devanam patireko dhivasaha. They reach to the Surya Loka and there are many meanings, <coughs> first the lesser serious meanings. These are the people who really are basking in the Surya Rashmi, <laughs> meaning they are the ones who have practically woken up before the sunrise, done their various Sandhya Vandhana and the other things, meaning it requires an extra amount of discipline in such lives. I mean that kind of discipline wherein uh, you know those who have been given the Yajnopavita Samskara, I mean if they still wear it, they should be wearing it. They should not take it out unless you have been given sannyasa. If you have already given it up then you are as good as a sannyasi then. <laughs> So, if you are being introduced to that Yajnopavita Samskara, what should you do? You should wake up before the sunrise, meaning in the Brahma Muhurta Kala and all the morning, uh, you know, getting ready and getting prepared, you get ready and then you offer the Sandhya Vandana before the sun rises. Certain amount of discipline is introduced into such lives. <clears throat> so, this is one meaning. The second meaning is that all that which is offered, where is it offered? Into the fire. There was once uh, in India, it was a very wealthy man's house he was attending the lectures and one day he said, would you be uh, willing to come to our house for Diksha? I said, I am fine with it, I can come. <coughs> so, after the Yajna was done, he drove me to his place and in any standards, whether it was US standards or Indian standards, it was a palatial building. And uh, you know, he took me to the first floor, Indian first floor. And there was a beautiful, you know, balcony garden. And we sat there, some water or some coconut water, something was given. And as we were talking, it was a beautiful glass. Uh, not say glass engagement, but a beautiful glass enclosure and which had a dining table and everything and the food was arranged there. And as we were discussing on the first floor, we got a call from wireless call from downstairs that the food is ready to be served. So, he said start serving, we will come. And he kept on talking, kept on talking for 5 minutes, 10 minutes and the second call came. The food is being served, please come down. Another 5 minutes. When I looked at him because it was also getting delayed, after Yajna, I feel I deserve some food. <laughs> I was really hungry. I said, shouldn't we go down? So, he he was trying to pull a fast one on me and then he said, well, if we offer things in the Yajna Kunda, Havana Kunda here, how will it go to Swarga? If we offer Shraddha here, how will it go to Pitruloka? If it can go, then the food which is served there should also reach you. <clears throat> then 
then i had to postpone my engagement with food <laughs> because he had spread this such elaborate setup to ask this question and i'm sure he would not allow me to go first eat and then uh, answer so i you know wait the thing i said i'll answer this after i eat food is kya pata to when i say give the answer and he is not uh, happy with it he said acha bye bye brahmachari ji i was still a brahmachari then i said okay fair enough we'll go we had food and after food i explained <clears throat> have you ever sent you know this money order money gram or what is the other one western union have you sent money across he said yes so you send have you sent it uh, abroad he said i am a businessman i need to be sending money so i i do all kinds i have sent money through western union also so i said that you give them indian currency they send that money say to us they deliver it in dollars so the money that you are sending is not reaching there technically because that physical money that you have given is retained by that office of that western union and when it is delivered it is worth that amount which is being delivered Yes, I have been doing that for years. That similarly, what you are offering into the fire is the dravya, is the physical oblations, and the fire is the transferring agency. Agni Devata is the transferring agency. He transfers, he translates that dravya which is given in physical form into a subtler format. and then he takes it to different worlds different deva lokas that we have specified that this particular oblation should reach so here he says ye teshu yas charate bharajamaneshu yatha kalam chahutayah adadayan these offerings that have been given in proper time proper place with proper mantra with proper dravya ahuti they go to the surya loka meaning they have been transferred <coughs> once these have been transferred then the punya phala there are some which result immediately <coughs> sorry there are some which re- result little delayed no but i want it right now have you ever worked in a garden have you sown seeds in the garden every sap every seed has its own time to come out as a sapling the longest one i think is the coconut it has to be soaked in water for a while then the external thing becomes little uh, loose as the water seeps in it has to be not a kacha one not the green one that which has been ripened that when sown will yield the sapling after couple of weeks the other uh, seeds that you throw in there probably 2 3 days you start seeing those little little saplings coming out so each seed that we sow has its own time for it to reap and what to talk about the results of it it cannot be instant either you sow a mango in 5 to 6 years you get a crop until then you have to wait you sow paddy it will give you a crop in 3 to 3 and 1/2 months so each one has its own time frame <clears throat> to yield that result similarly 
all this punya karma that has been done it is not that you know everything gets instantly given it is not that everything gets delayed depending on what kind of seed we are sowing what kind of intensity what kind of intention what kind of attitude that we have been performing that particular karma with what sankalpa we have been doing the results vary because you have demanded bhagwan has to create that kind of environment wherein that result has to reach you so he has to move so many people so many environments the entire matrix has to be shuffled for us to get that kind of result it's not a easy way but one thing that can be assured that every such karma done will yield its result when when it is done optimum uh, careful without that carefulness when we perform it it can have repercussions also how can puja that we are invoking god how can it uh, have repercussions it's like using a knife why don't you give the knife to a child a simple reason is they may know how to cut but they may not know how to protect themselves from that very knife <coughs> instead of cutting the vegetables how many times does it happen that you are cutting okra and the children are doing some kind of a mischief and you turn your attention there instead of that lady's finger the other lady's finger will can get cut it can happen similarly the actions that are done to invoke that no supreme in that particular form it has to be done based on what sankalpa you are taking if it is nishkama bhava you have lot of relaxed environment but most of the time when we do come to the lord and offer our puja we have a big list bhagwan you know one kid asked me once swami ji i have seen you wear kurtas which have three pockets even that is observed <clears throat> why three pockets aren't you supposed to be sanyasi who is not supposed to have anything at all with you fortunately that day in my one of my pockets i had a chocolate so i picked the chocolate and gave see that is why i have pockets i said no no why do you have three pockets i said when we go to the lord we have three kinds of demands so i keep three lists in three different pockets separately that which i have but i don't want please take it away that which i don't have but i want that is in the other pocket that which i have but want to have it more of it is the third pocket this is very uh, good trick from tomorrow onwards i'll also wear <laughs> having three pockets so that i can write down the list <laughs> so we go with lot of sankalpa whenever we a lot of desires to be fulfilled and it will take its own sweet time to perform that or get that result and most of these karma kanda that has been offered one thing that it assures is you do good karma here and the swarga loka is awesome experience when I mean, that is how the advertisement is given about swarga loka so there are many kinds of karma done <clears throat> so that we enjoy in the other world once somebody asked ramana maharshi <coughs> bhagwan what do you think about doing these kinds of karma to reach swarga so he said what a waste that you starve here so that you can go there and enjoy which, which makes sense like there so much of vrata niyama everything is done all for what to go there and enjoy 
<coughs> that is the same concept which is given in the next mantra. Repeat after me. Ehi ehi tita mahutaya. Ehi ehi tita mahutaya. Suvarchasa suryasya Rashmi bhir yajamanam vahanti Priyam vacham Abhivadantyaha Archayanti Ya esha vah punyaha Sukruto brahma lokaha So with the kinds of karma that we do, we develop that kind of likes and dislikes. And these likes and dislikes form a deep tendency called vasana. <coughs> Whatever is the likes and dislikes and we search for that kind of environment and we further strengthen our vasanas. So with this particular thought in the back of your mind, now try to understand the mantra. <coughs> so all that you have done in this world, all the good, once you leave this body, what do they do? They as though your punya karma is leading you. And what is it saying? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yehi, yehi, yehi. Yehi means, please do welcome. Aye, padhariye. And who is it that is welcoming us to that higher worlds? It is our own vasana which has been strengthened in the form of punya karma which is welcoming us. Ehi, ehi iti. Suvarchasaha Suryasya Rashmi Bhir Yajamanam Vahanti. And the poetic way of telling it is that as though the sun's rays, because that world is illumined world, and as though the sun, sun's rays in this form of Punya Phala is welcoming us to that world. <clears throat> and they give a nice sweet talk. You know, we have seen many people who have done lot of efforts. None like you who have done that kind of tapasya, that kind of rata, this kind of punya karma. You are really great, awesome. You have been given a royal welcome. <clears throat> Abhivadanti, archayanti, these punya phala, it, it almost like, you know, welcomes us and worships us. Worships meaning, it gives us all the benefits of all the results of Punya Karma. You know, doing good, being good takes us only so far. <coughs> what happens after reaching there? See, Kathopanishad style of telling the same thing was a little different. This is Mundaka Upanishad in its style of telling the same thing. What is the final conclusion that they want to arrive at is the seventh mantra onwards. So what do, what do they want to tell us? Plava hyete adhrada yagnya rupa. Ashtada shoktam avaram yeshu karma. Ye tachreyo ye bhinandanti mudhaha. Jara mrityum te punareva piyanti. The boats of karma yoga are pretty unpredictable. Boats of karma yoga are like titanic. 
when they will sink nobody knows 100th year right so it immediately came when plavaha plavaha boats and many of us have such great uh, belief in our karma anything can be achieved with my doing but that is not that trustworthy a boat plava hete adhruda yagna rupa all these karmas because they have certain limitations in its own <clears throat> and how many people to row it so recently somebody asked me swami ji i am trying to do this yagna you know some kind of home or havan that at home yeah home at home <laughs> a new house that we have purchased and uh, how many priests should we have i said uh, do you are asking a wrong question take one priest that is sufficient i said <clears throat> no no but in some yagnas i have seen that there are more than one what is the use of it then i said listen there are in actual yagna karma 16 of them required okay so i'll manage with one <laughs> where did i come up with that 16 as number ashtadashoktam avaram yeshu karma 18 people to row that boat of karma I mean, you said 16. Now you are saying 18. Hey, Baba, 16 priests and the yajamana and his wife. How many? I know I'm little poor in math, but this is easy math. 16 plus 2, 18. So what do those 16 people do? See, the leader for all these priests, the head priest. he is called brahma he is the chaturvedi he has to know all four vedas then there are sets of four each and usually that brahma is it is not to be considered that they are in the list of being a priest it is not considered it, it is not with due respect that if you consider them as priest they are uh, higher than priest they manage priests there is a hierarchy level there also so the 16 are officially the priests and they listen to this brahma four of each veda four four for each veda and these this brahma who knows the entire process <clears throat> so even performing puja here that is one place or one time wherein anybody who is coming there as a yajman to do puja listens to me thoroughly i say stand up they stand i say prostrate they prostrate <clears throat> i said you know go around yourself three times they go around never again that they will listen to us that is one place where they listen so the yajamana and his dharma patni and the entire crew of his priests they have to diligently perform and some of these yagas or karma that has to be performed is not a single sitting they are usually done for 41 days in <coughs> trying to remember which way that it comes in i think it is in the yajurvediya shakha there is a particular yagna which is mentioned wherein they say <clears throat> that while you perform this yagna the place that you have to choose is such that there is sun sun's rays for continuous 41 days 
it is only after I started reading geography I came to realize that such place exists. Do you know where? The North Pole. During the year, there is a certain part of the year wherein <coughs> you will find continuous sun. It never sets. It goes to the horizon, almost dips, but then it again rises. There is no setting. The sun is always there. I am just giving as an example. So, it has to have that kind of stipulation. Now, if, if, it, if 41 days that this continuously this yagna has to be performed, imagine how many sets of such people should be there. And what kind of uh, courage or what kind of patience that that yajamana should have to sit through 41 days continuously. Is it humanly possible? They have done it. So, it is definitely possible. So, it is not just one day or one few hours that you sit. There are certain things that you keep doing it for hours together, days together to reach to a certain goal. <clears throat> but after having done all this, accumulated all this Punyafala, you go to the Swargaloka. This Punyafala is like uh, getting your H1B. <coughs> you get your H1B status. How long will you stay there? As long as the port of entry decides you should be allowed to enter and live in that country. Fair enough? Similarly, <coughs> in the Swarga Loka at the port of entry, they will look at all the Punya and Papa and then decide how long are you going to stay there. You know, Yamaraj, his office deals with that special branch. And the head of the department is called Chitra Gupta. <coughs> So, there was this really miser guy who died, really miser, never done anything good for anybody. I mean he could not do good for himself, what can he do good for others? He would not spend even money for himself. So, Chitragupta looked at his entire life and he did not find even one Punya Phala that he can be awarded little entrance into Swarga. So, he looked at Yamaraj and said, mm -mm, I do not think he has done any punya. So, this was overheard by that <coughs> miser. So, he looked at Yamaraj and he said, um, Par Maharaj, I had once given 25 cents to a beggar. So, Chitragupta again you know, refers to the book again and looks at it and says, yes, 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 there is this mention here. See, I, I gave, but Maharaj, he gave that 25 cents not because he wanted to give, because when he opened and he was counting, it slipped his hand and fell into the drainage in front of his uh, shop. And there was a beggar who picked it up. He said, okay, you keep it. <coughs> so, Yamaraj looked at him and he said, okay, do one thing. Whatever is the interest on that 25 cents, pay him along with the interest that 25 cents and put him in Narka. <laughs> See, how long will we stay in that Swarga Loka? <clears throat> Jara Mrityum Te Punaha Eva Api Yanti. As soon as their backlog of Punya is finished. What happens to them? They have to again be born in the same world. In Swarga Loka, there is no Jara, there is no Mrityu. <coughs> jara means old age. There is no death, there is no old age. In this world, 
we have both in plenty. So they come back to this limitation in this Prithvi Loka again and again and again. As long as they are in this Prithvi Loka, they are strengthening those Vasanas and those Vasanas will lead them to Swarga and from Swarga again they come back to this world. How long will we keep coming back to the same limited existence? <clears throat> There is nothing wrong to be in the same limited conditioning as long as you do not have resistance towards it. I am fine. But we are not fine with that either. As the things keep happening, we keep uh, whining. Why does this have to happen only with me? Why is it that I am doing so much good? I'm doing, I need to have a better result. I need to have better satisfaction, better peace of mind. Do something according to that. But many are not introduced to that field. And even those many who are introduced to this field, <clears throat> so that they can go unlimited. After listening to Kathopanishad the last few months ago when we were saying, that particular day I was speaking about the main purpose of life <clears throat> is to reach this moksha sthiti and I explained at least seven, eight different logics as to why it is the purpose. <clears throat> so this person comes and asks, but what is the uh, place for you know, ambitions and goals of life, the other ambitions and goals of life? <clears throat> I said go pursue them <laughs> because after having pursued them then when you get mature to that level wherein this statement makes sense that is when it will be understood. How Gurudev taught for 45 years I do not know it requires so much patience. Immediately after having spoken about all the loopholes of karma and all the benefits as to why that moksha alone is the purpose of life, after having explained, he comes and says, what is the place and uh, value of goals, ambitions and uh, you know, or else life seems to be purposeless. Is it all the best? <coughs> it is like and I read this story long time ago. A student comes and says, you know, he has gone through a lot of things. He meets a guru under a tree, a small little shrub kind of a thing. Says guru is sitting there, a daddy wala baba. So this young man goes there and asks him for guidance. <clears throat> so he gives him a guidance for almost 32 years saying that you know this is the kind of path of action that you have to take. After 32 years of doing all this you will reach to this big tree under this platform and he gives the direction and everything. So, and it is a whole novel kind of a thing. So he goes through those 32 years of life and then after 32 years as the, as the daddy wala baba had predicted. The things happen, shape up in such a way that he sees the futility of it, drops everything and then starts coming in search of that tree which was mentioned. And finally when he comes, it is his own village and the outskirts of his village, the same spot where he had met that daddy wala baba. <coughs> and now that daddy wala baba has also become very old, ripe old. So he is sitting there looking at him and I said, so finally you made it here. So he is so disenchanted, he says, this you could have said that I will be coming to you 32 years ago. Why did not you say it? He said, if I had said so, do you think you would be in a frame of mind to really accept it? Now that you have gone through it, now you know why you are here and how fruitful it is to be here. It takes that time to mature, but until then what will happen?
going up, coming down, going up, coming down. <coughs> Have you heard of the genie story wherein that genie goes up and down the pole? Do you know who that genie is? Us. Zindagi bhar, the whole life we keep going up and down, up and down, up and down. And the same thing, go to Swarga, come down, go to Swarga, come down. In between also, there is a variety. You go to Naraka also. You have to pay for all the other things that we have done consciously or unconsciously. The same concept again, further <coughs> uh, emphasized with a different note. Avidyaya mantare vartamanaha. Swayam dhira panditam manyamanaha. Janghanyamana pariyanti mudhaha. Andhe naivaniyamana yathandhaha. Avidyayam antare vartamanaha. Where are we now firmly established? In deep dungeons of avidya. It takes lot of courage to accept where we are. For somebody who has been always praised, always been told that you are brilliant, you are intelligent, you are uh, better than the best. The universities and every educational platform has given certificate. <coughs> if such an educated one is told that you are still in avidya, they get so turned off, irritated. I have done so much, I have spent so much, how can I be in avidya? So let us go back to the first part of the, um, uh, this Upanishad. <coughs> how many vidyas are there? Two kinds. One is Paravidya, the other one is Aparavidya. All the Aparavidya is still a part of being ignorant. <coughs> that is where Adi Shankaracharya ji very beautifully comments and he asks a very amazing question. This is in the Guru Ashtakam. That stotra wherein he, for the, every two, uh, every shloka, last two sentences that he asks, uh, uh, poses a question. Manas chenna lagnam guru rangri padme tatah kim, tatah kim, tatah kim, tatah kim. Videshesu manyaha, svadeshesu dhanyaha. Sadachara vritteshu matto pravrittaha. Manas chenna lagnam guru rangri padme tatah kim tatah kim tatah kim tatah kim. Videshesu manyaha. Well respected across the globe. Swadeshesu dhanyaha is well recognized and often praised in wherever you call Swadesha. But the mind does not have dedicated focus. <coughs> Hare Rangri Padme or Guru Rangri Padme does not matter, it is the same difference. If after such life's effort put, if life does not teach us what exactly is the purpose of life, and we feel pretty satiated content with all the name, fame, assets, insurances, <coughs> what do you call the 
retirement plans i have lived a life but was it meant for that purpose like for example <clears throat> you send your child to the university i think this will touch the spot ha huh. i can see it you send your child to the university <clears throat> why are you sending the child to the university to study get educated having you also lived here you are also quite liberal but it doesn't matter that you have to become a doctor or an engineer whatever is that you think you are good at be best at it learn and then after the second semester or the third semester you get a pretty disappointing letter from the university <clears throat> this is the final warning also this is the letter says it is a final one <clears throat> if by the end of this semester your child does not make it up to this mark we may have to let go and then you suddenly all your job all your priorities everything put aside run go find that child <clears throat> what is your first statement why were you sent there in the first place as a child or why do you send the child there to the first in the first place isn't it to study isn't it to learn isn't it to make a good <clears throat> learning unfolding experience and if that purpose is not served what do you do as parents you will take action yes or no this example makes sense because it touched that spot of responsibility on your shoulders <coughs> imagine poor bhagwan has sent us with enough opportunities again and again and again to be born as human beings for what the purpose is to attain that highest state of freedom nothing less and instead what do we gather in this world all the dirt that can be accumulated <clears throat> my or more tor the maya huge lumps and lumps of garbage and then having gathered that garbage we have the audacity to sing maili chadar od ke aau kaise tere dwar हो क्या है ना धोखेबाज ये सेंटेंस विथ अ पर्पस अविद्यायाम अंतरे वर्तमान पौराणिक स्टाइल ऑफ telling the same standpoint <coughs> is narada once asked I mean, there many times narada questions this for our benefit he once asked bhagwan narayana they say maya and its influence is really powerful what exactly is it i want to taste the power of maya so bhagwan says tathastu and then narada is born as a sukara 
शू करे वराह अवतार A very charming piglet that he is born as, and as soon as he becomes of age, he gets married <coughs> to the prettiest of the pigs. <coughs> and as is the case with the pigs, and very soon. He has piglets, thirty, forty piglets, like in that murky water, muddy water. The entire family is splashing and jumping around. Ages have passed. Bhagwan himself comes. Bitter, if I love him, he will continue on the same thing. He has seen enough of Maya in that yoni. Let me call him back. So Bhagwan goes, and silently, when nobody is around or nobody is awake, he taps him and says, "You are Narada." I tell him, "Hey, me Narada? Are you joking? Are you kidding?" <coughs> and he wants to get back to that muddy water. He catches him and pulls him. Says, "Seriously, you are Narada." i have come to take you to the actual world of yours in your own shape yes but what about my wife and children and uh, will you allow them also to come so bhagwan later taps his head and suddenly all the past smriti comes back that he was an as narada he says bhagwan please take me quickly and he comes back as narada <clears throat> and in that avidya that we live in there are standards of success there are standards of name fame uh, self worth it's all in avidya competing against each other to prove what Adi Shankar, for all the mitya vadi that he talks about in Bhajagovindam, he very clearly says that if you have to really work, work hard, earn enough, and enjoy your life with what is righteous, there's nothing wrong in it. But then, where do we lose that balance? what is is not sufficient and then when we when we are talking focusing at the phys, at, at the personal level suddenly we go global and it's a trick that the mind is playing and what is a global attack i mean global standpoint attack if we were satisfied with what we were or where we were would we as humanity made this kind of progress let's come back from the globalization come to the personalization don't change standpoints all this fame name money worth self worth all this put together if it is not giving that contentment that happiness that which we are searching for is it all worth it think about it अविद्यायाम अंतरे वर्तमाना स्वयं धीरा पंडित मनम हिंदी देर इज अंग अंधो में काना राजा इन दी इन द किंगडम ऑफ ब्लाइंड वन आइड इज कंसिडर्ड एज दी किंग See, 
already in darkness it is filled with avidya and then there is competition and then there is ego struggle between those who are competing and what is the most cynical thing that happens that which we are competing those whom with we are competing for proving our self worth to be greatest do you know whom we are competing with the so called near and dear you being great or not great <clears throat> does a person from the you know third street from your house do they even know you do you remember or know your great grandfather name at least how many of you know 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 half of you don't know <coughs> our own third generation ahead while we are third street from us don't know us while we are gone third generation from down the lane may not remember us and what are we trying to uh, achieve name fame self worth and then competing within those who that we love or those those where we 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 proclaim that we love who is the smartest who is the greatest and who has the greater value and the respect and the value and the self worth between husband and wife between parent and children between in-laws and layers and layers and layers and layers of tamasha that we create and in that if we have learned the knack to manipulate everything around and still stay ahead of everybody dhira ha man man pandita ha manyamana the greatest of the greatest kya ukhad ne what exactly is the achievement standpoint at the end of it you know you have to study you have to do this you have to do that and then you have to achieve the heights of success defined by whom what exactly does that success mean do we have a definition for it what do we mean by success scriptures have defined it how do they define success if at the end of the effort that you have put it gives you peace and happiness i don't know where this symbol came from i just realized peace and happiness if it is not achieved if it is not attained knowing this what do we do spend the entire energies entire youth entire uh, resources in earning that success in earning that wealth after having earned spend the entire thing earned in regaining the health that we have lost throughout in reaching there what was the purpose do you see the futility of it at the end of it having reached then compare it with the society compare it with the you know in hindi they call it bradri in the community i have made it big i have made it large your own people you don't remember after three generations do you think the bradri will remember after th-
why are we stuck in that? And imagine in the, in the families or in the wherein the husband wants to achieve greatest, you know, the biggest building, the biggest car. And the wife is simpleton. And you say, what is the necessity for all these things? Uh, they don't have ambition, they don't have zeal, they don't have enthusiasm, they don't have anything to live. It is becoming naraka. I mean, the, the combinations can reverse either. And if both are cutthroat competitors. I met somebody in California and she is a double major and uh, she has done PhD. She is around 32, 34. She quit her job because she was <coughs> carrying and she was carrying twins and finally gave birth to two healthy boy and a girl. And then she had such a long, sad face. <clears throat> All that I learnt just to be a nurse for these kids. The whole standpoint is topsy-turvy. If tomorrow what you have bred becomes a nuisance for not just you, but for the entire society around you, then you would have thought, let, 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 wish I would have spent more time when it was necessary. Now all that I have learned, I am just a nurse now. You are not a nurse, you are a mother. Even that had to be taught. And look at the standards. Avidyayam vartam antare vartamanaha swayam dhiraha. Tismar Khan Samajge. And then Panditaha Manyamanaha. Janganyamanaha Pariyanti Mudhaha. <coughs> and what do they do? Like a rat race, go round and round and round. And what is that little white, uh, you know, it is not a rat. Something like a rat, it keeps going in that circular thing. Ha, <coughs> wait. Whenever I see a hamster or somebody on a, what do you call that? Treadmill. What are they doing? Oh, running, running, sweating. Are you reaching anywhere? What is Jiva's story? Treadmill syndrome. Running and running and running, reaching nowhere. See, at least after having put all this effort throughout the life, have you reached to a platform of non-vulnerability to the world of any happening? that you have reached to such peace within that nothing can shatter it. I am not saying that the life's experiences will change and it will all be pleasant and seamless. There will be ups and downs. But still, have you reached to that fortress within, fortress within, which is so secured that there is nothing that can shatter that peace. A little bit of the, a towel not there in the right place can shatter our peace. A toothpaste the lid not closed can shatter our peace. How vulnerable are we? All this effort put fine. Has it taught how to secure that peace?
has it taught how to gain that permanency in happiness? No, Swamiji, you know, life actually is 50 50. 50 percent is happy, other 50 percent is not happy. You know, there is always ups and downs. If you are happy, why would you search for happiness again? Because happiness is not like a physical thing wherein I eat and I feel satiated for now. And then after 4 hours I feel again hungry. Happiness is a state of being having reached where you do not need to search for happiness. Pariyanti going round and round and round. Constantly running. Janganyamanaha Pariyanti Mudhaha. And Upanishad is very critical. Who are these jivas? These jivas who are running without peace and happiness in life are called Mudhaha. There is no second thought to it. We may have big, big certificates of all educational qualifications. Do you have peace and happiness? Those are the standard for the scriptural way to look at life. The texture of life, are you at peace? Actually I am, but with a different spelling. I am at pieces, shattered. And happiness? Kabi aata hai, kabi jata hai. Never completely happy. In fact, the present state can be defined as if there is happiness, there is fear and anxiety built in it. So what is the fear? I may lose it. What is the anxiety? I may not get something like this again. We do not even enjoy that present moment of joy for this fear and anxiety pulls it away. And such ones are the leaders leading the rest of them. Andhe yamana yatha andhaha. What will happen if a blind leads a flock of blind? Tragic accident. And there are so many examples coming in my mind, but I do not want to make the spiritual en environment political. But I think that was good enough a hint for you to gather. Andhe naivani yamana yatha andha. <clears throat> Continuing, Avidyayam Bahudha Vartamanaha Vayam Kratartha Yityabhi Manyanti Balaha Yityabhi Manyanti Balaha Yat karmino na praveda yanti ragat. Te na turakshi na lokas javante. This particular chapter is like you know taking a What do you call that? Maze, Gada, and then taking the Jeeva and then pumping. So that let this simple truth get into that thick head of ours. Avidhyayam bahudha vartamanaha vayam kritarthaha. All these different standards that have been set by the society and the customs that we live in, which sets 
as to how successful you are, how great you are. And we are happy with that little, or we are content with that little hole that we build. On a different note, it reminds me of that Divar dialogue. So many of you know it. Century? Are you ghar hai, building hai, gadi hai, suit hai? There's a question to be asked. Say, do you have happiness? Do you have peace? So what if we have all these? And then, <clears throat> that is the total difference of the Western psychology and the Eastern psychology. Throughout the East where you see this kind of scriptural influence, you will see that their standard of living may not be that high. But their standard of life, the texture of life, the contentment with which they live is far more deeper. Whereas the Western psychology believes, and you go to the any self-help book. Why any self-help book? Even the advertisements or the advertisers have learned the art. I think I told you this earlier. I got one of the mails and there is so much of junk mail that comes. And once you are stuck in an address for 10 years, the junk mail just uh, becomes multifold. The mail comes. <clears throat> Officially my name still is not changed. To Swami Sarveshananda, but this mail caught my attention. Dear Swami Sarveshananda, and the first paragraph was so philosophical. What you are and what you uh, express as reaches out and touches millions. And what if you don't have straight teeth and white teeth? You cannot smile. We promise to straighten your teeth, remove all the crookedness and whiten them with a guarantee for next 30 years if you join now. Usually it is some $500 scheme, we give you a $100 rebate. Ensure that you have a glowing personality with a glowing teeth. All for the teeth? <laughs> Such big talk. That is the whole, uh, the, even the self-help books will teach you how to build that uh, uh, personality, that self-worth. It's all borrowed, it is vulnerable. And that can be shattered. In fact, the Eastern scriptures, what do they do? They burst that the initial phase of inflation. They pop it. And they show the self-worth, I mean the worthlessness of that self-worth. Which is nothing but ego, glamorized ego and ask us to transcend that and find that worthy self which is the conscious principle and not get lost in these kinds. What will happen when you get lost in these kinds? Tena turaha kshina lokas chavante. 
like Bhagavad Gita and Kathopanishad also says this, Khine Punye Martya Lokam Vishanti Ye Tat Vaitat. What will happen when you are done with your Punya? <clears throat> no Jeeva in the Swarga Loka wants to leave pun, uh, Swarga Loka. Why? Lat pad jati. You get so habituated to such kind of pleasurable life there, you don't want to leave it. So what does the system do? Martya lokam vishanti, vishakshepane, to throw, you are thrown back into this world of plurality. As soon as the punya is done, to such even that Swarga Loka that we have been aspiring through all this Punya Karma is not permanent. And life is not about pluses and minuses. That I might have done this much of minus, I have to do this much of plus so that I can balance it. Myth bursters. What is the bursting here? You have done so much of Papa Karma. You realize that you have done so much of Papa Karma. When you do so much of Punya Karma, it is not like a back balance wherein it will cancel each other. And the many people who go through suffering moment ask this, I have done such good deeds in this life, why now? Why this? You might have done good. Good will come. But that which is done is bad. That is why I said, Prarabdham Pushyati Vapuhu. We cannot escape from Prarabdha, we have to go through it. You have done good, you will get good results. You have done bad, you will get bad results. They do not cancel each other. They do not. Then what does all the puja, punya phala of the, you know, tirtha and all these kinds of vrata, it builds enough stamina and strength for that mind to go through any ups and downs in life. So what should be the focus in life? Not to build a world of pluses and minuses, but to find, to, to mark that path which will help us transcend both these pluses and minuses. That path which can transcend the dichotomy of all these pluralities is what must be done. Because that equation of pluses and minuses will never come to a balance. Whatever so far bad has been done, so be it. Cannot change it, so be it. Whenever it results as bad karma, I will face it. Moving forward, let me live a life of value based, ethical based, moral based lifestyle. Why? Because that lifestyle helps me transcend this plurality. Because as long as I am in that polar world, I will be swinging. And that is why it is called Moodha swings. Moodha alone swings. That is why mood swings. Tena turaha kshina loka chavante. We come back to the same. And what is the reason? Raga. It is not the music raga. Here raga means attachments, likes and dislikes that we have created. Those vasanas bring us back to the same environment and we start again. But how do we break that cycle? 
what do you think is happening this is an opportunity given by the god it is the opportunity given by the scripture to break that cycle see of the entire congregation of 950 families this was announced how many of us are here we know how many are here what do you think this is happening this is the very opportunity that bhagwan is giving showering as a grace on us so that we understand this point break the cycle transcend this polarity <clears throat> how that is said in the 11th mantra that we will see tomorrow yes time is up there is only 5 minutes and in 5 minutes i don't want to start that new path of evolution om purnamada पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवावशिष्यते ओम शान्तशान्तशान्ति हि हरि हि ओम श्री गुरुभ्यो नमः हरि हि ओम